What up, footy lovers? Welcome to Footy Smart. Special episode today. We're with Michael Hartman, one of the best shot stopping goalkeepers I've ever had the chance to play with, and a, a dude just like me, proving that size doesn't always matter. So, <laughs> <laughs> so we'll, we'll get straight into it today. As a goalie, how can a, an opposing player catch you off guard or get you when you don't have a chance to set your feet? So I think uh, some important things for that would just be the player's vision, just noticing where, where I am in the net. Yeah. So if I'm a bit high off the line, maybe he can surprise me with a quick uh, ball over the top. Okay. Um, also, just the changing of the way that you, uh, you shoot the ball. Mm. So maybe not a full uh, swing of the leg, if you know what I mean. Yeah. A quick toe poke. So some things like that, they can uh, surprise the goalkeeper and maybe give you a bit of an advantage yeah. uh, catching the goalkeeper off guard. And that's getting in the next question we're going to ask too is about some of the cues that you read from players that, that give you a step on them because high level goalkeepers and good shot stoppers I know they're not always just reacting a lot of it's proactive and and uh, I mean you you said a little bit about the eyes there are there other cues like where they put the ball that are in relation to their body obviously if it's a little farther away they're set up better for a shot um, do they take a look you know at the goal before do you do you ever see any of those things yeah, yeah definitely. Uh... Back to, I've already said it, just looking at their, uh, their head, their eyes. Normally when a player wants to shoot, he's going to look up, and then maybe the focus goes back to the ball. So that's definitely very important. And then uh, the other thing I would have to say is just body position. It tells the goalkeeper a lot. Yeah. If you open up your hips, most likely you're going to curl the ball. A right-footed player will curl it around the goalkeeper into the right side. So I think body position is uh, very important. It gives the goalkeeper the advantage where if you hit a very good ball, uh, maybe I can make the save if I read you correctly. Yeah. Because it doesn't all come down to reaction, power. A lot of it is awareness and being able to read uh, when the shot's coming and by looking at the body position where most likely it's going to go. Yeah, so and it is good for the goalies out there too. I know most of my players aren't goalies and they're not doing scissors in the goal or anything, but <laughs> I know I do have some goalies that are going to watch this video just because of this guy, and, and that's good to know because, like I said, he's one of the best shot-stopping goalies and, and also very, very good on breakaways too. And that kind of goes to the next question. When you're going against a player and he's coming on a breakaway, what makes you, because I've seen you stop players way more often than not, um, what makes you so good at stopping goalies on breakaways? I mean, wh what, do you, what do you read from them? What do you, what do you, how do you make yourself big? What, what, is, what do they do that's successful and not successful? Answer any of the questions. Any of you, Bob? I'll try to answer a few of this. Okay. But, uh, definitely on the breakaway, it's uh, awareness it comes down to again. I'm anticipating uh, your next touch, and I'm hoping the attacker will take a bigger touch, mm. and that's my cue to come out and to close the distance. Because on a breakaway... The net's, uh, I don't know exactly the, the size of it, but it's quite big. So it's important as a goalkeeper to be able to come out and close down that angle. And if the player has a big touch, I can close that angle down very quickly and make the net very small. But if, you, if he has good control over the ball, that make it much more difficult uh, to be able to come out and close down the angles. Uh, so yeah, I mean, That's my, great. my highest yeah. percentage on the, uh, the breakaway is the closer I get, the more likely I'm going to save it. Yeah. And then again, it comes down to... Maybe the eyes, but mostly I would say uh, body shape where the player will finish it. You speak a little bit about uh, body position. Tell us more about, is there a way a player can disguise it? Have you seen players that disguise their body position? Maybe open their hips up one way and, and find the other corner. Definitely. Uh, exactly what you just said. At the higher level, players do a much better job of disguising it. Uh, one of the best ways is when players open their hips. And they pull it back the opposite way. Okay. And you can, I mean, I'm not an attacker, but I know it's possible to still uh, open up the hip. It's going to make the goalkeeper think, oh, a right footed player, he's going to go to my left side. Yeah. And if he pulls it, uh, it's very difficult. And uh, I think that's a, a ch attribute in a lot of like, high level players because not everybody can do that. Yeah. A lot of people like this one, and we're going to get to this one because it's a fan favorite. But um, if you're defending a free kick outside the box, I know there's a lot that goes into it. But tell me, uh, how do you, I, I, maybe once again, like you said before, you have to cheat a little bit. You have to make that guess a little bit. What are some of the things that go through your head when you see, you know, usually a righty lefty on the ball? And obviously it's on whatever side it's on. But what are some of the things that you start to make where I'm going to cheat a little bit this way or this way? Or I think he's going to do this. Yeah, yeah, definitely at the higher levels, professional levels, you need to anticipate. Uh, otherwise, you're not going to be able to make the save. Yeah. You need to go one way or the other. 
And like you said, uh, so the ball is on the outside of the 18, and it's a free kick within goal shooting. If it's a lefty, I, you know, I think, uh, say it's on my left side. So yeah. if it's a left footer player, uh, maybe he has a higher percentage to go back to my right side, not over the wall. Yeah. If it's a right footed player, maybe he goes around it, so I set my wall a bit more that way. Yeah. So uh, those are some things that play into it, obviously, but yeah. also just maybe doing my homework before the game or just noticing from this game of the play, how is, uh, which players are on the, on the ball? Yeah. And are they finesse? Are they power? Uh, pretty much that. If somebody that can maybe finesse and I think yeah. can put it over the wall, then maybe I'll, I'll cheat. Mm. But if it's somebody with a lot of power and they're close, maybe I, I hold more true to my spot. And I, if he goes over the wall, let the wall do the work. Or if yeah. it goes in, it goes in. Yeah. So it's, so, a, it's a lot of uh, awareness. You need to be able to think anticipate where it's going to go uh, yeah. in order to make those saves. Yeah, so I mean, I think for the goalies, you explained it perfect. And, and from my point of view, for the field players and the guys taking the free kicks, I think uh, it's important that you you understand what type of player you are and where the image you might give off, as well as uh, d disguise your body shape as, as usual. I know like I've watched a bunch of free kick takers and I know some of them have different techniques to hit different sides and I think it throws off goalies because they say, okay, maybe he's on a 45 degree angle. No way he can hit this 90 degree angle, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, that's something I watch and, and that's something that I think uh, we have to realize as field players is we have that choice. We have around the wall or over the wall. Yeah. For the, not under the wall, but you know, it's, that's De Bruyne <laughs> and Ronaldinho and yeah. we'll leave that to them because if we mess that up, <laughs> <laughs> People are like, dude, you just pass the ball on the wall. So those are the best saves. But uh, back, <laughs> yeah. back to what you're saying, though. Yeah. Uh, just before I forget it, I'll yeah. throw it out oh, there. Oh, perfect. Maybe uh, on a free kick, something that could throw me off is if you have the two people, you have a righty and a lefty. So then I yeah. gotta think, okay, ah, okay. you know, yeah. I need to really think, okay, who do I, th who do I believe is going to take it? And maybe if that first person runs over it and doesn't shoot it. Yeah. It's gonna throw off my set position a little bit. It's gonna yeah. make me uh, prepare for that. If it doesn't come, if they do a good job. Um, maybe I'm a bit off balance. Yeah, I'm never off balance. But, there you uh, go, man. I've it's a good that. way. It's a good way to to definitely trick the, the goalkeeper on a free kick. Yeah, that's that's a good point, and that's good for you know us as as players and and coaches. I think a lot of them know that as well. But usually a righty lefty and and different options. Uh, advice overall, would you give? This is going to be kind of weird because you're a goalie, but what advice would you give to a guy that's that's playing against you, like in the game, whether it's one touch, whether it's volley, whether it's disguising his body? What would you say is the best way to score goals consistently? Uh, however you want to say it, it can be one touch, it can be a setting up, but what what can they do to score on a high level goalie or just mm -hmm. any goalie? Uh, it's a it's a tough question, but. Yeah. Uh, I think the highest percentage to score, if I look at, when I do my data and I look at uh, where most goals are scored, they're scored closest to the net. Yeah. Uh, maybe on crosses is one of the easiest ways. Uh, one touch quick, just like in the speed of play, I think. Yeah. It needs to be fast. Uh, and uh, just anywhere close to the goal, it's, it's going to take away from the goalkeeper's uh, attributes of the reaction. It's going to be more important on those anticipations. Yeah. And if the ball doesn't come where you think it is, you probably don't have a great chance to score. So I'd have to say just anywhere. Get close to the goal. It's, yeah, it's going to be the highest percentage. Get yourself score. in a good position, mm -hmm. and uh, like you say, and I tell a lot of my players uh, that I've coached, and and I think that we're gonna, we haven't got this video yet, but we're gonna get into soon is one touch finishes and taking a quick release. It can be maybe two touch, but making it fast because not only the defender gonna stop it, but you allow goalie to set his feet. And I watch Ronaldo, he's the best goal scorer of all time. If you want to watch him, look at a lot of his goals scored. I think maybe if you take a number, 30, 40% of his goals are one touch or super, super quick releases. So uh, that's, that's really good advice and uh, insight from you. Okay, um, yeah, th that, that's the good, that's the footy stuff. That, so that's good. We're going we're gonna to hold with that for a little bit. But uh, let's get into a little bit more personal stuff. You're a Jersey kid. You're from Jersey, and, and uh, you seem to have, from what I know and from what I've seen, the best GTL in all of Sweden. And if, for, you, for those of you that don't know, Jim Dan Laundry. <laughs> I've seen this kid hit them all within an hour. Uh, tell me a little bit, how are you getting that done here with such limited sun? Uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's difficult, i got to say, but <laughs> you need to wake up early and you need to go to bed late. So uh, <laughs> you need to put in the time. When you see the sun is out, quickly get out. What about the what about the balcony? Yeah, I got a balcony. I'm blessed with a balcony, and <laughs> I can uh, thankfully, you know, Sweden's not the warmest country, but on my balcony, it's like Florida. No breeze, huh? Almost nine months out of the twelve. So <laughs> that's an amazing balcony. GTL is 
It's a lifestyle. GTL is alive in Sweden. Remember this. Man, is he, one thing you don't know about Mike Hartman is he's a vegan as well. So we have to we have to test his veganism a little <laughs> bit. Um, what is the debate between uh, being a vegan and eating meat, whatever? I think it's awesome for the environment. I give him jokes, but he's a really good person, and, and I do appreciate that. But um, what is your opinion on the Venus flytrap? Eating, eating insects, eating meat. I mean, it's, it's a plant. How do you defend yourself? But is it a plant? <laughs> now, that's, that's another one. I'm going to have to, before I say anything, I don't want to say anything uh, and have people's, uh, it's, a, it's, a t it's a tricky one. I got to go home, do my homework, and I'll, I'll look into that and I'll get back All to it. All right, we're going to get back to this. You got nothing on the spot, huh? I, no answer. 1-0 no for meat eaters. 1-0 no for meat eaters on this one. <laughs> and last one is, I did the tofu cross the road. As a vegan, you have to know this, man. The road. Don't know. <laughs> Don't know. Because because he didn't want to be accused of being a chicken. Oh my. That's a bad joke. One to one. One to one. <laughs> one, to one. one to one. Back to the vegans for that joke. But had to get it out there. There's a lot other, but I know you you guys got stuff going on, but. Oh, I just want to thank Mike Hartman for taking his time, and he's a big bro. He's got bro points up the wazoo. Um, big bro here, uh, good teammate. Like I said, one of the best goalies. Check, out, check him out on uh, Instagram, social media. His YouTube highlights from this first half of the season just came out. Check those out. Give him a like, and I will like you. Maybe subscribe to your life. Um, but go ahead, do that. Uh, you can find it. Where can we find you at for social media? Social media, Instagram is uh, mhart underscore 01. Okay. That's probably the best way to follow me on social media. And then YouTube, just type in my name, uh, Big Mac Daddy Michael Hartman. <laughs> no, just type in Michael Hartman soccer, it'll pop up. Big Mac Daddy might lead you to something else that your parents don't like you <laughs> looking at. But uh, yeah, I want to thank him a lot and uh, really, really enjoy you guys coming along for the ride. Stay classy, footy lovers.